the differences between sudden cardiac arrest and heart attack. One is really sudden related to heart rhythm problems, and the other one is a heart attack where there's a little bit of time, but it can lead to sudden cardiac arrest also. Sudden cardiac arrest basically means that all of a sudden your heart stops beating. And usually what causes a sudden cardiac arrest is arrhythmia, where your heart is kind of chaotic or not beating as it should, or the electricity is, is dysfunctional. But when that happens, the heart stops beating. You don't get good blood flow to your organs. You don't get blood flow to your brain. You basically pass out and faint. And if nothing is done about it without the heart pumping, then you really what follows after a short, a few minutes actually is then death. A heart attack basically means death of the heart muscle from reduced blood flow to that particular part of the heart muscle. A heart attack means that you have atherosclerosis or cholesterol plaques that have built up on the walls of the heart arteries. And when these cholesterol plaques build up on the walls of the heart arteries, they can get thicker and thicker with time. And the, the plaque, if the plaque is soft enough, over time, that plaque can rupture or break open. And when it breaks open, it bleeds. And when it bleeds, it forms a clot and that clot then blocks out the entire heart artery. When that happens, there's no blood flow flowing to the heart muscle. And a heart attack can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. So somebody has a heart attack, they can develop an arrhythmia right away. That's why some people can actually die from a heart attack because of that sudden cardiac arrest that happens to, to them. So the heart attack does not lead to a cardiac arrest. Then that person usually can then get to the hospital where we go in and open up that artery with a stent to allow blood flow, re-establish blood flow to that particular part of the heart muscle that, that had the heart attack. Because if blood flow is not reestablished very quickly, that person could still have a sudden cardiac arrest or that person can develop heart failure because of reduced blood flow to the heart muscle. Hypertensive heart disease basically means that the blood pressures are so high for a period of time and then the heart tries to compensate for these pressures and it becomes thick. And that's adaptation to the blood pressure that's high because the body can only take that amount of pressure for so long and then the heart starts to fail as a result of the blood pressures that have been high and nothing is done. Now, all of this is reversible, right? Because if a patient receives medication for these blood pressures to control those blood pressures, if that's done early enough before the heart starts to fail, then all of this is potentially reversible. And that's part of the importance of managing blood pressure. Heart failure is a type of heart disease. So heart disease encompasses all the different kinds of heart problems that a patient can have. That includes hypertensive heart disease, coronary artery disease or blockage of the heart arteries. That includes valvular heart disease, which is a, a problem with the heart valve um, that is supposed to allow blood to flow one way or the other. That includes pericardial disease or, you know, the heart, the sac that the heart sits in can develop a problem. That includes arrhythmias. There are two major types of heart failure. The one everybody knows about is a type of heart failure where the heart muscle becomes weak. When it becomes weak, it doesn't pump enough blood to all the organs. And if that continues and is allowed to progress, then what's gonna happen over time is that the patient's body can't tolerate it anymore and they can actually die from it. And this is the reason why we talk about people getting heart transplants and so on. The other type of heart failure is, um, is what we call diastolic dysfunction or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Basically what that means is that the heart muscle is really stiff and because it's very, very stiff, it doesn't fill with blood the way it should. And so because it doesn't fill with blood the way it should, it doesn't pump blood the way it should. If nothing is done for either of these, the end result is, is, is death really. The role of C CPR in improving cardiac arrest is that CPR help the patient in a temporary way be as stable as possible before they get to the emergency room. At the time the patient is having the arrhythmia, the heart basically stops beating and you don't get blood flow to your brain and the rest of the organs. You don't get blood flow to your heart either. So that would perpetuate itself and make things worse. So CPR is a way to generate that normal rhythm back when uh, people are performing CPR, the general idea is pounding on the chest to try to get the heart to get circulation. And that makes sense, because if we're saying that the heart stops beating when somebody goes into a cardiac arrest, then if you're pounding on the heart, you're basically mimicking the pumping sensation of the heart. You're getting blood flow to the brain, getting blood flow to the organs, including the heart. And that's a temporizing measure to get the patient to the emergency room. So that is a life-saving measure to get the patient um, to the hospital. If somebody has a sudden cardiac arrest and CPR is not done, that, that they're gonna die from it.
in my opinion, one of the ways more people in the Black community le learn more about the, this life-saving skill of CPR is educating the next generation. Going to schools and introducing the concept of CPR to schools, because guess what? Those children learn about a life-saving skill that they could potentially use for the rest of their lives, and we know that kids' brains are spongy. They tend to absorb quite a bit, much more than adults do. But also, the kids can go home and teach their parents. They can teach their parents, their uncles, their aunts, their siblings, their cousins, whomever, their grandparents, also how to perform CPR. So I think education is important, starting with the younger generation. And then education in other forms too, you know, uh, public forums, YMCA, barbershops, churches, all these different community areas or community centers that people go to.